So I straightened my hair last night, like a half an hour before going to bed. And my hair is never this straight ever. So I'm gonna touch it a lot. Just a fair warning. But <laughs> hi booktube, my name is Stephanie and today I'm going to share with you my OWLS TBR. The OWLS is a readathon created by Bookroast. Technically it's called a magical readathon because she's doing several of these kind of types of readathons that are based on Harry Potter. And this is the third year that she has done this. So it, she kind of base, bases it a little bit on the third book. And I can't wait to see, she usually has like some kind of uh, multiple choice story that she does on Twitter. And I think it's fun. Sometimes I manage to catch and vote for what we are going to do, but we'll see what happens this year if I manage to time it. So yeah, this is my OWLS TBR. And the OWLS are based on the 12 subjects that we know of that Hogwarts is giving out. So for each prompt, for each subject, we have a prompt. So yeah, let's start with book. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm a Slytherin and I will get all of the prompts and I will, I'm a Slytherin. You will see why I'm saying that because my goal is just to fulfill the prompts. I'm not like, oh, I need to read books and novels, no, 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 no. I just need to fulfill the prompt. That's the goal. This year I've decided to go for Spellmaker, which is a new career, and also for uh, Animate Hiccups, <laughs> Animagus. And I just needed to add one more owl to get to the Animagus one, which is nice. So for the Spellmaker, I need to pass Ancient Runes, Arithmancy, Astronomy, Charms, Divination, History of Magic and Transfiguration. And to get Animagus as well, I needed to add in potions. But as I said, I will do all of them, period, because I might change my mind. The Newts, which is the next readathon, takes place in August. So the first prompt is for Ancient Runes, and that is to read a book with a heart in the title or on the cover. So for that, I'm going to read a middle grade. This is The Dragon with a Chocolate Heart. And I don't really know a lot about this, except for the fact that the cover is really, really adorable. And it's about a dragon who drinks an enchant some enchanted chocolate. Like, if you want to trick me into drinking something or eating something, put it in chocolate. And he, or is it a she, meh, don't know, uh, transform into a human, which, you know, ew. I basically just searched for my library for heart, and then this popped up. Then for uh, Arithmancy, we have read something outside your favorite genre. And I was first going to go with nonfiction which is my third favorite genre, but I found something online. <laughs> Again, uh, my library is brilliant. My favorite genre is science fiction and fantasy. They are very close to each other nowadays. So the one I picked was Et Vattentet Alibi by Agatha Christie. This is a short story. And The Unbreakable Alibi is the English title. And I have not been the one who has put these on Goodreads. Someone else has, so I'm counting it. This is like 30 pages, not even 30 pages. So uh, I have no problems that I will fit this. Spoiler, I do have another one of these, at least. I have more of these. One of them is Miss Marple, which I have read before. But yeah, so this is for the arithmancy prompt. Then for astronomy, we have read a book primarily when it's dark outside, which interesting take on that, but I'm gonna pick another Agatha Christie short story. This is uh, Diomedes Hesta, uh, The Horses of Diomedes, and this is a Hercule, 
Hercule Poirot story. So yeah, we'll see what this is about. Then we have Care of Medical Creatures, and for that we need to read a book with some kind of animal that has a beak on the cover. And I don't really think it has to be an animal, it just needs to be a beak on the cover. And for that I have Grief is the Thing with Feathers. This is a crow. I needed to... Yeah, it is, it, it's a crow. And this is a, this is a verse novel which I it was ages ago since I've read a verse novel or novella I guess you would call it and this is about a family whose the names of the people is Crow, Dad, the boys so they don't have names but the mother in the family has died and this is about grief then we have Shams and for Shams we need to read a book that has a white cover I have here Människan, en kort historiska av vår förmåga att klanta till det, by Tom Phillips. The English title is Humans, and it probably has a subtitle there as well, or an undertitle, I don't know the English term for it. But basically this is a book that talks about, yeah, historic events where humans have really screwed things up, like when, what's this name? Thomas Austin's decided to import 24 rabbits to Australia and you know things like that I'm really looking forward to this then we have defense against the dark arts and for that we need to read a book set on the on the sea or by the coast and for that I'm going to read My Hero Academia volume 6 by Kohi Horikoshi let's pretend that was correct and let's put it here because it actually kind of blended into my wall or my book wall and yeah this follow this is set right outside of tokyo so i'm gonna count it and also in a previous um volume of these he the main character there he is uh, uh trained on the beach so i'm gonna count it and this is about this takes place in a world where 80% of all the people are born with a quirk and this quirk gives them one power. It can be everything from making the hair grow faster to uh, making the nails grow faster to shooting laser beams from the navel which is actually one of the powers and yeah we are following him that I write now. What's his name? Midoriya? Yeah, I just recall why I didn't want to say his name. Uh, basically, he's born quirkless and then he gets gifted a quirk. And we are following him and his classmates as they go through hero school. So, now we come to the scary one. Divination. Assign numbers to a TBR and pick a random one. Yeah, so I just, I picked up a pile of books. I decided to actually go with like novels this time. So let me just pick them up. Here we go. We have Thermal Uprising by Jim C. Hines. The Woman Who Writes Like a Man by Tamora Pierce. Nuke in the Moon by Wynne Sarton. And Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Murr. Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. Recursion by Blake Crouch. And the Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. So let me just put these down and see. Pick my phone up and just... Okay. You need to see this before me. I need to have my glasses technically, but yeah. Let's just go for this. Yes! Okay, I'm happy. I'm so happy. Ah, uh, I was looking forward to this. Yes! Okay. Yes! And it was on the top. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> yes! Oh, uh, okay. So this is my divination book. This is the sequel to Terminal Alliance and I am so happy that this came. And the, the annoying part is that technically, except for Nuke in the Moon. I basically have to read all those books in April. 
I might read one of them in March. Shut up. Shut up, phone. But yeah, I'm really happy about this. Yes. So now when I've calmed down, <laughs> we have Herbology, and for that we need to read a book that starts with M. And I have Minecraft, the beginner's handbook. I'm not even ashamed. Uh, I bought this many years ago when my computer couldn't deal with having Minecraft installed. So I bought a bunch of these and then I found booktube and I decided that I would save these for readathons, so now's the time. I have three more, so that's going to be fun. Then we have History of Magic, and for this we need to read a book that features witches and or wizards. And for that I'm going to read Monster of Vidunda, Lexicon of Världenstasen by Christoph, uh, Christoph Gustafsson. And the title will translate to Monster and Creatures. Lexicon uh, over the creatures of the world. It's English and Swedish. There are some things you can't translate. But this basically is a list book with a bunch of different kind of creatures. So basically like kind of like um, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them in a way. But in here we have um, witches, if I can f actually find that section. But we, yeah, here we go. So here's the witches section. And yeah, they have snake people. They have people that eat dead bodies. They have birds, monkeys, demons, and creatures of the dead. So they have a bunch of those. And yeah, witches is one of them. So this is my pick for History of Magic. For Mongol studies, we need to read a book that's written from the perspective of a Mongol, or it is from the perspective of a Mongol, which means contemporary, or another short story about, by Agatha Christie. <laughs> this is the Blue Pelagionum, which translates to, which is uh, the Blue Geranium, the Blue Geranium. Whatever. It's a short story by Agatha Christie, and this is the Miss Marple one. I will definitely finish this one. I probably shouldn't say that I definitely will finish something, but okay. For potions, we need to finish um, a book that's under 150 pages. And uh, this short story by H.G. Wells is under 150 pages. This is um, Don Blinda Srike, The Country of the Blind. And I don't really know much about this one either. This is a more science fiction -y one. But I do know that if I finish this, I will have finished the small four pack that I bought three years ago. So this is the last one of those. And the last book for Transfiguration is a book that has shape shifting in it. For that, I'm going to, I'm going to read uh, Dragonbound by Tara Harrison, and this is part of my Goodreads Choice Awards award, yeah, Choice Awards 2011 challenge. And this is about a world where we have humans, verse, and face, and we are following a girl who's half ver and half human and she gets blackmailed to stealing something from a really powerful ver and obviously this is a paranormal romance so i'm expecting sex basically so here we have them the 12 books and short stories and mangas and it's almost falling out so let's just use my shin just like that that I will read to fulfill all the prompts for this owl season and yeah this list is definitely subject to change because both because I'm a Slytherin and I will change things up but also because of the fact that I might DNF a book and then I will have to pick another one however let's face it I doubt that I will DNF one and they are falling out. Okay, let's just put this. 
Okay, the books are safe now. <laughs> yeah. So those are the 12 books that I'm reading for my owls. I will also do a separate TBR, which will probably more be like currently reading at the end of the month. Uh, but yeah, those are the 12 things that I will read for the Owls Readathon. Have you planned yours yet? Or will you just see what happens when you get to April and then read whatever? That's also a strategy. I wouldn't want to do it myself but yeah so yeah that's it I don't know why I say yay so many times but apparently that's something I do at least according to my co-workers but yeah see you next time bye